All right, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, hold on one second. Uh, pronouns again? Hey, oh, uh, she, her, or they, them. All right, mate. Okay, there we go. All right, let's get your let's get your guest guest plate up here. All right, um, uh, can you give me a quick test test? I just want to make sure we got the audio uh, high enough. Sure. Test 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 test. Okay, test, test, that test, should test. hopefully be good enough. That should be good enough. Let me know if it gets um, if it gets uh, 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 uh chat. Let me know if it's too quiet. Okay, <laughs> so um. Yeah, uh, that was one of the most embarrassing, uh, like, troll attempts I've ever seen. I really hope that these, that the arguments you were making in chat aren't what you actually believe. Um, you can go, be... you can, do you want to bring them up? you got the chat logs, right? I mean, yeah, sure, you want to want to bring it up? Yeah, let's do this, hold <laughs> on. Spoo -ba -spoo. Let's see here. Bam, let's pull this up here. Oh, that's the Vosh one. I got to bring this from Demon Mama. Here we go. All right, let's take a look here. Let's bring up those chat logs. <clears throat> Let me scroll all the way up here. Shit, we have my logs from Vosh's chat. I think I've only yeah, said like two things in his chat in like two years. <laughs> so here we go. You started with saying there's no substantial moral difference between fucking animals and eating them barring necessity. Both are fine. Okay, good to know. Um, so remind me why I'm supposed to care though. If it's essential for the production of animal products, then I don't care. That yeah. is your argument. Yes. Uh, let me read that again, just so that we're clear. You were not, your argument was not, well, I think there are different levels of sentience, so we can probably justify some, some, uh, products. Your argument was, so remind me why I'm supposed to care. If it's essential for the production of animal products, then I don't care. So, like I said, you just straight up lied to my face about what your point was, and you were actually being oh, yeah, more sure. of a dumb... We can, we you can, were actually being even down more down. obnoxious and, and, and like, like okay, off, the, off relax, the ring. relax, relax, relax. Don't tell me to relax. Okay. I'll just kick you out of the show. It'll be real, real, real okay. simple. Okay, <laughs> I didn't realize this was such a fucking hostile engagement. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm know. really sorry. Like, uh, uh, do you do you you really are trying to like back off this? Uh, when like in chat what? you were just I... mad talking mad shit. Demon, demon, mama. demon come mama. on. At no point, at no point was I deliberately trying to hurt your feelings or impugn your character. You haven't okay? hurt my feelings. You're just annoying okay, me. Cool. You're just annoying me <laughs> by right. being by like playing right. coy Thrill. after talking a massive game and then coming out and being like, "We can all be reasonable here." After you talk a well, massive we can, game yeah. in chat, look, look, let's be, let's, let's just fucking let's let's not pretend here. We know we're here to debate. Oh, we're here to talk it through. And you had some big claims yep. in chat, things like, and then you also just were honest about those takes. But yeah, sure, yeah. Let's, so let's get. To it. So yeah, I, I was you asking. Want to, do you want to state so your asking, revised position, or? <laughs> so I was asking why am I why am I supposed to care, right? And the reason, mm -hmm. and I admit I'm doing it kind of hyperbolically or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to work out like the moral framework by which we're supposed to evaluate whether or not we should eat animals or what animals we should eat, right? Because you said uh, actually during during your diatribe that like insects, for example, you'd probably be okay with eating, right? You'd probably be okay with yeah, I think uh, a case could be made know, for that, yeah, pretty easily. We I use mean, them in like insects have, and shit, right? Yeah, insects have uh, yeah. A, a extremely, extremely primitive nervous system. They don't have any capacity for memory whatsoever. As far as I know, there might be some insects that have some capacity for memory. Um, and their, uh, their ability to contextualize suffering is next to non-existent. Yeah. They're basically tiny I, uh, electric machines. And I said, extending the olive branch at one point, that actually I've stopped eating squid recently. I got confused. I meant octopus. I've stopped yes. eating octopus recently. Uh, probably right? a good idea. The uh, octopus are probably going to take over. Of that. <laughs> probably. Because they're like intense fucking uh, like social interactions, big brain skills, right? Mm -hmm. They obviously have an incredibly alien intelligence, uh, but it seems to be one that's like really, really quite advanced, mm -hmm. right? Might, yes, might be some of the most intelligent animals on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Along with, like, I probably wouldn't eat dolphin. Okay. Um, but you and eat pigs. I think you could probably, I think you could probably make a good argument as to why we shouldn't eat pigs. Possibly oh. cows, because they have yep. particularly interesting, like, emotional relationships. The further you go down, I don't, I don't know how much I care about chickens. Oh, but no. like, damn. The further, so you, that's arbitrary. what I mean, right? Where do you yeah. where do you draw the line? So the further oh, you I... go down the scale, the 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 less capable an animal is of experiencing suffering, 
right? And when I say experiencing, I don't just mean like feeling the physical pain. I mean everything that comes with that, the holistic experience of suffering, right? right. The uh, the fe- like feelings of violation, for example, or violation of your autonomy, all that oh. sort of stuff, right? Which enhance the suffering that human beings feel yeah. because we have greater sort of like conception I mean, of what's going on in the world. As far as we know, yeah, yeah. We, we, we tend to grant ourselves a bit of an advantage there. I mean, yes, there are some objective, there are some uh, s- like a sort of objective standards by which we can say humans have like because humans have a huge capacity for memory but so do tortoises and elephants like and i don't know if we can make an easy designation between which one of us has more um and also Mm. i think that it matters Uh, there's like there's a difference with regard to um like like pigs maybe they don't have as much of a capacity for memory but they also don't live as long as us so like Mm -hmm. if they're if 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 their life is is devoted to suffering in the name of gathering um you know gathering uh their meat or whatever you want to gather from them or fucking them i guess yeah. if you really like fucking pigs um but like yeah if you're uh if that's the you know if that's the the like way you want to go with it, i mean we're, we're talking about a percentage i think that there, it's fair to compare that like hey yeah maybe they don't live as long as us so their memory capacity isn't as high but they certainly have enough to be able to recognize and be traumatized and uh and suffer at a great extent um uh with uh you know with regard to uh various forms of torture and murder yeah yeah for sure they can be yes. uh they can feel physical pain they can they have like trauma they can remember it. Yeah, we stuff. know that they can yeah yeah yep. so it's like um so again yeah that's like where do i where do i put the weight i oh. i i also said in chat at one point right where i was like oh. everybody uh everybody says like factory farming's pretty barbaric Right. It's horrible. I said yeah. something along. I said something along those lines. Well, right? I mean, yeah. But I, see, but do you see how like you contradict yourself by simultaneously saying, "Oh, I don't know how I feel about factory farming." Once people call, call you out on making dumb takes about it, and then you I mean, backpedal from where you were, saying, "Which is why should I care? All I care about." And, yeah. And again, why I'll should I care? To, yeah. Um. I mean, you don't. Yeah. You already stated that you don't. So like, this is like by it. You know, from the get go, it's like a. It's like almost like a a bad faith argument. You already stated that you don't care. If it's essential for the sure, production, I, animal just, sorry, I, I, I don't I, care. So then why yeah, are you I'll, here I'll, if you just I'll don't take, give a I'll, shit? I'll take, res- I'll take responsibility for that one. I should have just left it at why should I care, right? Okay. Because that's what I was trying to dig down to. It's like, yeah, was you the, were a little too honest there. Yeah. Damn. What's the axiomatic principle there? Yeah, like, uh, because suffering the, is yeah, horrible and we, we should try to reduce yeah. suffering. Unless, I mean, I don't know, maybe you operate on a completely different moral structure. Maybe like... Maybe you've got like a like a you know a god or something that tells you what's good or bad, but that's not the way that I operate. That's no, I'm pretty much I'm out. pretty much utilitarian or okay. rule utilitarian. Well, then, some like, something around there. Uh, yeah. I see basically no way to simultaneously be a a utilitarian who also um, doesn't care about animal rights and about about the the capacity for suffering it's in fact it's 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 essential okay to cool so i do so i do care about the i do care about the capacity for suffering all right okay well, well, I, you say I, you I do like now that. but you didn't before but yes sure okay let's let's assume that you're okay, being okay, honest fine. about that yeah. yeah it was it was it was an exploratory bob okay uh-huh. um it's oh, wow. perfectly very fine. funny very funny i love i love those uh exploratory okay. barbs yeah. about heavy ethical issues I don't know how much of it. Okay, fine. Super, super. Maybe funny. I'm maybe I'm misjudging. Maybe I'm misjudging. Do you how like much making like? Do you like making like it? slavery jokes and stuff like that, or like? Or maybe like maybe jokes? I'm mis maybe I'm misjudging how much people give a fuck about this issue. It's not okay. just about people maybe giving a fuck. It's from the ethical super, position. Super important. Yeah, it's super important Sorry? for a lot of people. It's also super important to the animals that are getting killed and tortured. Okay. <sighs> Okay, so, but there are instances in which I think we would both agree that it's, like, necessary to kill the animal, um, to to kill animals on a regular basis, in fact. Deer culls are a perfect example, right? You don't mm-hmm. cull deer, they destroy the environment, uh, they destroy the habitats of other other animals, causes, causes infinitely greater suffering, and then you end up walking around a barren fucking wasteland with a whole bunch of starving deer, right? Yeah, nobody fucking wants... I mean, wants, that's, a bit wants of a, that's a bit of an oversimplification. There are, I mean, a lot of the time, the reason why we have to do deer culls is because there's already been culls of natural predators. Like, for example, I grew up... Um, 
Uh, yes, yes, yes. The devious Chilster brought it up, but we, we need deer culls because of us culling another animal. Yes. Originally, like, for example, I grew up in a state that used to have a large population of timber wolves. We know there are literally yeah, no yeah. timber wolves left in America. So, yes, the only predator remaining who can... So you uh, could, like, reintroduce... Yes. So, so the, the solutions to that, right, are mm -hmm. you can reintroduce the wolves, okay, mm -hmm. in which case the deer get culled but they get culled in a particularly savage fucking manner. And we can't really place moral responsibility for that on the wolves. That would be our fault for, like, putting the wolves there, right? Yeah, um, sure. Or we can cull them responsibly. We can cull weaker right. or older members of the herd or, or what have you. And we can make sure that we give them as painful and humane a death as possible, right? Generally, as painless, sort of like you mean, or painful? Sorry? You said painful, as painful of a death as possible, which is fun. Oh, sorry, I my I bad. I meant, pain, I meant painless. Yeah, yeah. yeah we give yeah, them sure. as humane and painless a death as possible. Yeah, I mean, right? well, but, um, but there's there's, yeah. there's a thing here, which is that that um, that when you're talking about deer calls, you're talking about preventing great suffering that would occur otherwise. We're talking mass starvation, um, like horrific suffering. Sure. We have no choice except be in the name of reducing the overall suffering in the name of preventing the suffering of those very animals we undertake a deer call because if we don't their evolutionary nature will lead them to unintentionally kill themselves in a horrible manner like starvation mass starvation is terrible um and yeah, yeah so that's i'm just that's... trying to work out where the, where the line is right we've gone factory farming bad deer culls okay well, right you don't i don't know okay. actually for sure if you actually think factory farming is bad Oh, I do think like, factory do you, farming. You is actually bad. think factory yeah, farming probably is bad? Overall. Probably okay. overall. I don't think. I'm. I. I think factory farming could perhaps exist in a more like with with ridiculous amount of reform. Um, the way it is currently, there's an amount of uh, savagery and barbarity that just isn't necessary to get the resources that we get from the animals, right? I mean, like, it, no, I mean, it is. It is so. Uh, it is so unbelievably across the line like it's it's beyond beyond like even reason like we just literally yeah, exactly. have we have we even have humane ways to kill animals that we don't use because it's more expensive to do so um yeah and exactly. the industry is fucked from the from the bottom up yeah but the problem is that that you run into there is that factory farming is the is currently the only way to meet to meet the meat demand a meat demand which has been uh largely created by the industry that does the killing they the, the demand for meat ha we can try from... and regulate we can try and regulate that industry so that we use those like humane more humane killing methods use more um we could subsidize more land so that we're not keeping but you all still the run into like another problem which is that you're still killing intelligent sentient creatures and damning them to a lives of a, a live a life of essentially constant imprisonment leading up to their death so I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that like imprisonment, if if done in a in in the most humane manner possible, uh, is particularly harmful to like most animals. This comes down to like sentience and their ability to conceive of their autom autonomy being limited. If they're born in a cage and die in a cage, if it's a cage that's big enough for them to live healthy lives, I'm not sure the animal gives a fuck. So what about I, you? I don't know how we prove that. If you're born in a cage and you live in a cage. What is your capacity for suffering if you know nothing outside of the cage? If I know nothing it's, outside of the cage, probably yeah. not particularly large. Yeah, it would be yeah, difficult so, to know. So I guess that yeah. you support. So as long as as long as you're able to control the minds, to control the inputs of the of people, you would basically be willing to make an ethical argument for human slavery. So long as the humans that are being enslaved. That's like, are... This is the coup machine argument, right? Like what? what Sorry, maybe you haven't heard of it before, right? So you got no your, uh, you got your, you got your machine, right? You just, uh, what you can do is you can put all the people in the world into a little pod, right? Okay. Um, like think, think of it like the Matrix. We're using them as like human batteries or whatever, right? Okay. But inside the pod, they got like little electrodes on their brain that just like keep them in a state of perpetual pleasure, right? Uh. Perpetual happiness and ultimate well-being. Okay. Uh, the utilitarian argument is that like this would this would be preferable to the lives that they currently lead because they have uh, you know uh, because because we're eliminating suffering essentially completely um, only, and we're just only, giving if, only if it is true that you would indeed be able to like for example if it was possible like I mean this doesn't really map well to the Matrix if you've seen the Matrix series because 
part of the whole thing about the matrix is that it actually doesn't do a good job like the the matrix wasn't yeah, the no, I, wasn't good yes if, if there was such a way i mean we i might know be, we might the be in that right now like, for, for for all we know we might be in that such of a thing right now where basically like in some some like we're in a simulation that that s simulates the ideal like life or whatever the ideal well, balance like you could go into that forever i just think so, that that's kind so, of a so the silly reason, pipe dream the reason i brought it up right is because like i would argue that this would be completely unethical for humans because factored into my utilitarian calculation is uh autonomy and the right to autonomy the right to make okay. free choices and so on mm -hmm. i believe this is part of the holistic analysis of like human well-being now in the case of animals i'm not so sure i'm not so so sure animals can conceive of even the concept of autonomy and therefore i don't know if it should be something that's included in their holistic well-being Right? I mean, That's why I think like, how keeping is this, pets how, is probably okay. Like, but how is this like, well, yeah, but when you keep a pet, you treat your pet ridiculously well. Like my pet lives sure, a life yeah. of luxury. My, my, my pet lives a great life of love and, and its needs. And I spend a lot of time, like personally, I spend a lot of time learning about what I can about like dog psychology because I want my dog to be as happy as possible. I want my dog to live a fulfilled sure, life. Sure, ultimately... I'm but ultimately, because you recognize that it has a diminished intellectual capacity compared to humans, right? I mean, you don't value degree? it. You don't value its autonomy. I mean, like, I don't to well, make its own I mean, choices about where it wants to go and where it wants to be in life. Only because, only because, because of the world that we've crafted, uh, there as a byproduct of the world that we've crafted, the the dog's evolutionary like natural capabilities, like like for example, my dog can't figure it can't figure out why a car is dangerous and so yes yeah. um because i have no choice i would imp impugn like imp impugn or uh, impede on my dog's ability to to have autonomy because it would get killed and hurt very badly otherwise and it just is incapable of understanding that but don't you, you think just that let all the animals free from the factory farms like the same thing will happen right well you yes but that is a wait wait what like you no what like wait that is like the the factory farms were created to do this like what if we, if you want if you're going to ask what like a solution would be the solution would be like i would say the the ethical solution would not to be just to let all the animals free but instead to free them and move them to a a carefully cult cultivated recovery facility where those animals could live the rest of their lives not in the suffering that they had before that would be the ethical solution in reality what will probably happen is um is that these That's animals will They'll all yeah. be killed, yes, and that's a, but and that's horrible, and we might have basically no other choice because of the the system that we built. But that doesn't make the system that we built okay at all. Yeah, not no, I'm close. not saying that it doesn't make and, it okay, right? But, but I'm arguing for like, that, but, but I'm to arguing up on that, to like, hold, okay. hold on, to follow up on that, don't you think then that for this is this is for you and for anybody else who is is presenting arguments like yours don't you think that it would be preeminently important for you to discover whether or not animals what and to what degree animals are capable of suffering and what animals are capable of suffering to the to the greatest degrees bef like as a as a I think the research man, in like that as area like a, a mandatory going. moral moral calculation in order for you to understand like i know like i already know this i've done this research i know that animals suffer i it's to the point that it actually bothers me at times um and and that is why i'm like that is part of the reason why i've decided to slowly reduce my meat consumption and i've had a great success with it um and why I'd are like you to get slowly reducing it instead of just stopping by the oh, way because it's incredibly incredibly difficult to to uh, to quit stopping to just stop cold turkey it's very very difficult to do so do you think it's like a like an addiction then yeah oh saying? absolutely meat is absolutely an addiction yeah yeah, I think there's an argument that could be made. Like we have a culture, we especially we have. A, I mean, you could especially say it's a cultural addiction, 100. percent Like cold turkey is is very hard to do, and sometimes it can make you literally physically sick. And that is why I mean, I don't argue for people to just cold turkey meat. I, in fact, I constantly advocate for people to uh, reduce as much as possible without causing themselves in incredible distress it is challenging to do it and i do think that there is a huh. calculus that needs to be done there as to like okay wait a minute how much do i want to support this industry versus um like how much i 
you know, I am able to endure changing this. But I think it's important in the same way that I would aim to, uh, you know, to do my best to not support other hor horrific things. I think that people should do their best. I, again, I, I yesterday had a rant about vegans who take a purely moralistic pers perspective. It's like, oh, you could quit eating meat tomorrow. It's like, no, actually, that's not reality for most people. Um, but I do think yeah. it would be if it was, that'd be great. Of course, I would advocate for that if it was possible. I just don't think that's effective or realistic. Um, yeah, I get, I get legitimately depressed if I don't have meat. Like, fucks with me. <laughs> yeah um, i get like meat withdrawal but like yeah i mean so, i mean that I might guess, be worth like I, I would say that's like a like that's a that's an existential condition that i would say if that's true like i would i would i i think challenging it would be very valuable or at least or at least recognizing what it is like that that's like that you have been like i don't know that you've been addicted to a a thing that is not like within your control at all and is and is predicated on unbelievable suffering like i i see it no different as like I don't know. There's a lot of different things you could say. Like, I, I don't know. Um, sure. There's a whole, a whole lot of horrible things you could say are addictive. Like, I mean, like, I don't know, like, um, like being addicted to like, I don't know, ch child's bones and like eating them or something. Like, I think that like, that would be, you know, yeah. Oh yeah, shit. It sucks that you're addicted, that. but you probably should, probably should overcome that. <laughs> probably stop eating child's bones. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. So, yeah. But the, the whole point of me bringing up the autonomy thing, right? Because I think we've got a little bit off track here, is uh, me saying that I think that it can it, it can be possible to ethically farm animals, right? Mm, um, mm, as long as we can do it in such a well, I mean, you you keep your pet, right? So yeah, as long as we do I don't it in farm the my pet, that, I, like I keep my pet in like my pet is not farming your pet for companionship and for uh, well, and, no. and for that's your that's entertainment. Not, that's, not, yeah. that's not accurate. I don't farm my pet for my entertainment. I I inherited this pet. Like this pet was brought from. Maybe maybe you could argue that somebody else. Uh, like I mean, in, in fact, my dog was a stray who wandered to who wandered to hum humans. You know, one of my relatives and. And then was dying in the wild, and so the you know my you know my family member fed this dog. Yoda, my dog is Yoda. Fed Yoda and and nursed nursed her back to health, and then she stuck around. She was astray originally, so I don't think that that really applies. And also, I think that's a very like sort of bad faith understanding of humans, like uh, of human and dog uh, like uh, friendships. Like I mean, I do think that there's there's a lot of potential for uh, for uh unethical behavior or whatever but in general i think that it's more than it is a mutualistic relationship in a lot of ways um and also it's I've very fucked up by the fact so maybe i'm maybe i'm that? missing out on that I, i've only kept reptiles so maybe i'm missing out on that because reptiles they uh they get used to you and they'll crawl up on your shoulder and shit but they don't really give two fucks about you I mean, yeah. maybe, yeah. I mean, the, again, like, I do think that, I think, like, I think there is some reasonable level of, like, d differences in understanding, but but suffering is suffering. And, uh, like, if, and again, once again, this goes, this falls on your, this is on your side. I, I openly acknowledge that there is an incredible amount of unknown, and I choose because it makes sense to, because my moral positions would, uh, you know, guide me to say, wow, we should err on the side of this suffering being probably more than we think it is. We're very careless. We've been incredibly careless. And the current standard is so bad that there's no way that like supporting it is, is even yeah, fuck factory rational. Farms. We were, we yeah, well, fuck that, factory right? farms. You say now yeah. as like the, 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 the <laughs> Bailey, the Bailey behind 18 mots. Like, sure, yeah. if, you, if you want to be here, like that, that's I mean, fine. that literally but was like, what it was. I think there's no doubt about your massive backtrack here. <laughs> okay, if that's what you want to call it. Yeah, so it I guess I, my proposal is that we can ethically farm animals, right? As long as they're kept in, like, decent conditions and their deaths are relatively, if not entirely, painless, right? I think that we can possibly do that. Um, obviously, the current factory farming system isn't set up like that at all. But I don't agree that, like, the killing of animals and the eating of them is the immoral thing. I think that creating suffering that is unnecessary for us to perform that act is the thing that is immoral. It's like when you said, like, you could just swing a cat around your fucking head, right? Um, well, your argument I would disagree. Would... Why? Yeah. Uh, well, I would disagree with that, right? Because we kind of axiomatically view gaining pleasure from something else is suffering directly, right? Gaining pleasure directly because something is suffering. I don't um, think that's as, necessarily as true. Sadism is a, like, ethical sadism is, like, a huge part of reality, right? That's, like, half the BDSM. It's literally in the name of BDSM. 
wait i mean what? i suppose no, okay not. <laughs> yeah but you don't you i mean even in the bdsm community if somebody's like deliberately hurting somebody against their will we well, we yeah, allow that's people the consent, to, that's to the each problem. other there are people who genuinely there are there are people who genuinely love to be tortured sure yeah and like and that, that but, is their thing so like i mean they're not suffering they're not they the pleasure well, from they, their experience they are suffering. suffering they just they just have made the decision as an agent that they consent to the suffering for some reason that is valuable to them yeah. like and so the and, well-being but the, but, outweighs the suffering well, for them in that situation. well maybe That's but the but the person who's enjoying the suffering the sadist the person who is who enacts that suffering is probably enjoying that suffering because it is suffering and um, I'm sure that there's some consideration to say I mean, this. I've, I've beat the fuck out of a few people in my life, and I wouldn't enjoy it if I knew that the other person didn't consent to it and also enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a much more complicated relationship than simply well, I yes, want to hurt. It's very complicated, but this, but we're not. But this is. Yeah. But we can't. But you can't even have that com complicated conversation with animals because the sure. the the st the status quo for animals is that we just fucking do whatever the fuck we want to them all the time, constantly. And your sure, argument, your right. argument is that was that you don't care. And again, let's not like maybe I'll say you do care to some degree. There is some degree that you care. But overall, you're fine with animal products, even if it's predicated on massive suffering. I, just because, I said and, and I think we flimsy, should probably get rid of the factory farming system. Okay, right? but, okay, sure, but there's all kinds back to that of... point. You can yeah. say I've backtracked, conceded, I don't mind, like, but here's the position, here's the position I'm presenting okay. you with, right? So, right, so then where do you, then the question becomes where do you draw that line? Because I would say that there is not a single animal that we currently farm um, that is that falls within the bounds of like of okay behavior. Like we don't even come close. We're not even close to anything that would resemble ethical animal agriculture. In my opinion, ethical like in in my opinion, meat eating alone is like really super problematic because unless you're literally like eating animals that like die from natural causes or whatever, um, mm -hmm. then you're you're prematurely ending an animal's life just for your own enjoyment. And I don't know that I can agree with that. I don't know that I can agree with uh, with just sure, it's from you for enjoyment. What's that? You're not specifically taking pleasure in the suffering. Well I mean um, I mean it doesn't matter. It wouldn't matter what back. the reason is really. It doesn't really matter what the reason is that you take that you're taking pleasure in it. You're still doing the action. The action is the same. Sure. The action is you are terminating an animal's life early for your own gain. No, I was just saying why we for why, your own luxury why, in fact. I wouldn't say that like just walking up and torturing an animal for the hell of it and getting absolutely nothing else out of it why yeah. we would see that as like axiomatically wrong right like th there's a degree of separation you're getting enjoyment um, from the animal product you're not getting I mean, enjoyment i would I, see my suffering. position would not be from like one of intent i don't really care why somebody is torturing the animal i care that they are torturing the animal i don't think that there's well, that's more of a rule that's more of a rule utilitarian position in that like we ought to view people get uh people um uh people enjoying suffering for suffering's sake like as a rule we should view that as a bad thing right um, uh, we, should, we should not probably, have that in our society probably yeah. Yeah. So that's minus, more of a minus, rule like i don't know bdsm important. i guess sure sure i mean i don't even agree that bdsm is that but that's a yeah. different conversation i suppose um so yeah so i propose i propose ethical farming ethical culls when needed um and i think that that's a perfectly reasonable way of like farming and eating meat i think if you have a chicken coop in your backyard there's absolutely fucking nothing wrong with you see with uh with that that seems perfectly reasonable to me i don't think animals have a particularly um uh what would i say like complex understanding of what it means to have autonomy to be an agent to make your own decisions right mm, i would argue uh, there's degree of a like lot of humans that don't necessarily... <laughs> Probably a lot of um, humans that don't have that too, but I, I don't think that we like we don't generally go around when like we don't generally like walk around in society and then look at other humans and go, well, that human is slightly less capable of understanding it, it, the value of its life, so why don't we send that one to war to die for us? And that's okay. Like this, this, this opens the door by by building by building your morals. Oh, slightly of... less. I think there's a pretty big fucking gap between like all like most humans, barring those with like very severe disabilities and animals, right? 
yeah in terms of their ability to i mean conceive we're, we of these. are we are going to get into the situation you do realize that like right here is where we start to get into the um the the the, the xander yeah. hall the argument that xander hall had like i i don't know if you want to like have that <laughs> argument about like whether you'd be okay with factory farming disabled people because that sounds pretty fucked to me but your your world yeah, no, would be okay with that. that yeah but why See, do you, this, is, uh, this is where this is really a, this is a question that yeah. really does more stump a lot of people. Human rights, right? Where What's it's that? like you care more about human beings than you do about animals. And that like okay. we we wouldn't want to ever have a situation in which we can put other human beings through that degree of suffering. Yeah. Mm. OK. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess then that I mean, that's a very uh, strict and human essentialist view. But all right, if that's the position that you want to take, that just because we're humans, we are given some sort of divine right to not suffer in the way that we make other animals suffer um, or in the way that we make other creatures suffer for our own gain. It's, it's made sentimental. to rule over the animals. Yeah. Wow. I know that. Well, I, I know. That. I didn't know a Christian Viv. I didn't know that. I didn't know we were going to have a Christian Viv. Oh uh, no! Oh no! I'm 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 elucidating the argument, not agreeing with it. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I um, I do care. I do care mostly uh, more about humans than I do about animals. That's for okay. sure. Um, the kind of issues that I focus on are ones that affect humans. I think probably because I can understand them better. Right. Like it's sure. it's much easier to empathize with human suffering than it is with animal suffering, for sure. Um, at least yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. But but I mean um, but I mean, so basically what you're saying here is that your argument is like a purely emotional argument. That that like you feel more attached to humans and therefore you're okay with other things suffering because they're not humans. Because they're not the thing that you like, basically. I mean, in the case of like what you were saying about like severely oh, excuse me, severely disabled people who have like who might have the same kind of cognitive capabilities as like a pig or something. I'm not even sure if that's possible, but you know, well, on, I mean, on I mean, the, yeah. Uh, but the see, that's, that, 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 that like asks a, an important question then, which is then isn't the sort of the ethical onus uh, in your position, which d my position does not have this ethical onus because I've already concluded on it. Um, isn't, uh, isn't uh isn't the the ethical onus on you to to actually be responsible in the pursuit of how much suffering each creature has instead of just sort of callously tossing that to the side and assuming that because they're different than you they're less like how do you like by what metrics do you even determine uh suffering like i know what metrics i do like capacity for memory capacity for uh for trauma um like uh there's there's a, a number of, of behavioral well, stimulus that we can recognize me the level of sentience and the ability to understand things like autonomy, right? The removal of a human's autonomy can cause them great suffering. It's damaging to their exactly. well-being. Whereas like so the removal can... of an animal's autonomy, um, it, it would have to be it would have to be much more strict, much more severe, that restriction, right? You would have to like put an animal in a very small cage for it to understand the limits of its world. Whereas I mean maybe like, I don't you know. Just have like, free range, do you know free that or are you just sort of then... you're kind of just claiming that though, right? Like you don't actually know that. I mean there's I, there's scientists I mean, who are trying to figure this you, out, right? I I don't know that you experience suffering, right? Well that's like, true, you don't. Uh, yeah. or, some, or whatever, but I think that right. we can make reasonable uh reasonable deductions, right? And it doesn't well, seem but... like a chicken, for example, has the cognitive capability to say, Oh, well, you know, I'd really like to move house, I'd really like to uh, go live in Spain, but this Well English they might farmer maybe not in the live. way you do. Like I mean you talked about this with with, with uh, octopuses be having very alien intellects, but they do nonetheless socialize and we can learn to interface with them because we both both us and octopuses are um I mean, they have straight up language right they have straight I mean, up language i mean yeah um, they communicate with each other but i mean but that is also like there are there is pseudo is what's that sorry i i think language is one of those like really big um cognitive barriers because it allows pe it allows uh animals to conceive of um, more abstract concepts, not only to communicate them, but to conceive of them. It's that whole Orwellian newspeak thing, right? You remove certain parts of language, it, may, it dulls the ability for people to even conceive of certain aspect, uh, abstract concepts. And the same I would say for animals, right? Animals, right. the animals that do have language, I'm not sure about octopuses, but if we go to like dolphins or something, very abstract concepts, not something yeah. that they can like... Um, 
pass between themselves and it's unlikely they have the capacity to conceive of them at least in the well, same well, you way know that, that most animals have some form of communication like even uh even mm -hmm. like i mean like hell chickens form pecking orders which is a a, a very uh, limited language, but is nonetheless and, and a very physical language, but they do speak and they do yeah. remember it. They remember their pecking order. They remember faces. Like we know these things about chickens. And in fact, like, again, like- Chickens the, remember uh, faces? Well, yes, they do. Chickens can remember chickens faces. Chickens are so fucking bit... stupid though. You can like well, hypnotize them with a piece of chalk. It's amazing. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's, I could, I could hypnotize a human with a piece of chalk. You give me the chalk and I'll show you. But, um, but the- I don't think uh, hypnosis is real for humans. Oh, well, it is. So, um, How do you hit a human with a piece of chalk? It's very easy. You'll just have to, you'll, I mean, you know, somebody, yeah, t people are saying TOS, TOS. It's true, it's true. But, uh, I'll show you. What's TOS? I'm so fucking confused now. Uh, hypnotizing people someone with, hypnotizing chalk, people with a piece of chalk. Yes, it is TOS because it's implying a, a uh, it's implying a kink. Um, but uh but what was i gonna say um the, the fact is that like i again the moral onus would be on you to determine the to actually figure out the truth about how much suffering that they have and here's the thing that the the history of science that we have so far the consensus on animal intelligence has been one that we have continually found that they have more capability for intellect than we think all always this has been the case has been an increasing trend the more that we come to understand them the more we discover about them i mean people thought that crows were stupid pests but we now know that crows are incredibly intelligent we don't even know why well, they're incredibly intelligent they have they have time what's that crows have always been viewed at least uh at least mythologically as like crafty schemers well yeah and... but myth mythology like whatever like there's all kinds of weird things in mythology myths there's dragons but we're talking about like the actual knowledge like we have you know we have like birds there are birds that we think are kind of like oh birds are kind of dumb but they're birds that are fucking crazy smart we don't even know why we don't even know Hell what yeah. makes what makes crows so smart but then like what's to say that that's not the case for a chicken like what if we find out that there's like a bunch of shit that we didn't know about chickens i mean like the face thing that's a relatively new development that we learned that chickens can um you know there's been re research done on this you could look up the studies right now about chickens being able to recognize faces that's pretty major like if a chicken can recognize and remember a face that's huge what if i ate the chicken aristotle last night I mean, you Shit. might have, like, but I mean, I don't really care. Like, I don't really, I th that's kind of like a silly argument. But like, I, I think that it's like a little bit concerning the, the, the level to which like, like people are willing to hand wave these ethical questions in the name of just like, well, I like my meat. I like my cheeseburger. Sure. Yeah. I, I Yeah, I think it is just about. I think it is just about like an animal's ability to like conceive of suffering. Yeah. Maybe there is oh. some like barrier there where it's just like I really like eating meat. I grew up eating meat. I've yeah. I've hunted animals. Like hunting animals is a very interesting uh and like I wanna say wholesome. It's probably not wholesome. But there's some there's something really special about it in terms of like the connection to your food and connection to nature and shit. Well, sure, but you don't eating do that. Meat, sorry? You don't hunt your own food. The most thing you'll do is 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 hunt through your phone for the for the nearest uh, fast food restaurant where you can get a burger. Come on. Sure. Yeah. But like, You've never got, have you ever even gone food. hunting? I, I I don't even think they let you. Isn't it illegal in the I UK for you to like walk outside and think? Walk outside and think. <laughs> yeah, it's like illegal. Yeah, sure. Like if you if you think if you think a non queenly a non royal thought, you're just like. They just like fine you. You know, I can uh, I can go out and buy and own a suppressed Uzi. Jesus, that's really wild. You can't do that in America. As well, long as it's two two count. It's okay. I, I can, I, go, I can out go out and, and buy a grenade launcher, so I think I win in the end. Damn shit, you're probably right. I actually but, literally um, could, yes. But it'd be, yeah, no, it would be I, a process, I, but yes, I could. So so I was adopted at like seven. I spent a little bit of time growing up there. That was in the country. Um I went uh, out hunting a couple of times there and then when I was 16 I uh, left the children's home I was at and ended mm -hmm. up living in the uh, living in the nature reserve in a tent and I didn't know you could claim benefits because I was so heavily fucking institutionalized I didn't know shit mm -hmm. about the outside world we were so institutionalized when we got to like the halfway house one of my 
one of the people who was living there with me tried to make a cup of tea using the hot tap right he had no okay. conception of what a kettle was like right you don't you guys don't have a conception of what a kettle is either because yes, you're american do. but like pretty much every house has Excuse an me. electric kettle you can boil water right mm -hmm. no i know I was, i'm like half memeing but we i know like they're much less common uh in the united states than they are no, people here. don't like tea as much people like coffee more here yeah but so we'd only got like water from like the hot, hot catering urns or whatever, right? So I had no idea about like claiming benefits or anything like that. I ended up living in a tent for about a year in the nature okay. reserve, and I used to trap animals there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I've 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 hunted and eaten my own <laughs> eaten my own food before, okay. and there is something really really rewarding and interesting about that experience. It's try like. It's very difficult to describe, but you do have a lot more appreciation for the food and stuff. Well, and of I think, course. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I think that's probably true about anything that you put personal effort into. That's like a cognitive bias. Oh, yeah. But yeah. like that like doesn't grant it any sort of mystical value or ethical value. Like at the end of the day, like you're still well, no, killing the ethical value. It provides yeah. a certain level of well-being above, you know. That's that that has to be factored into the utilitarian calculation. Sure, you can say of course, that it's like, the suffering of the animal, but like it's yeah, but I mean, and also yeah, like Wolfie brings up like rewarding, like growing plants can also be incredibly rewarding, and also like le legitimately mathematically uh, more efficient and better for the environment than than cultivating animals. Like I agree, some... there are some there are some special cases like when when deer calls are needed. Like I don't I don't have any problem with like if we have to do a deer call because our ancestors fucked up the wolves. Well use the meat, right? Yeah, you use well... the meat for sure. Use the meat if you want to, but like I don't I don't have any problem with that. Like I don't have any problem with the act of like eating the meat. The eating the meat isn't some unique moral thing. It's the act that record that is necessary in order to produce the meat in the first place, and that act That's is to terminate I... another life. That's what I'd like to see, honestly, is the um, is is the abolition of factory farms, um, the reclaiming of our countryside, uh, and and people going out and hunting their own food. That'd be maybe, really yeah. Or I mean, I would love in an ideal world, I would love for us to use our giant brains to figure out that. Oh, wait a second, we actually don't need to do that. We can literally quite. I am. I'm quite sure we will be able to efficiently. If we hadn't, if we hadn't eaten meat. Meat, our brains would still be tiny um i don't think that's true uh that sounds like some that sounds like some meat industry like that sounds like oh well guess what i mean viv our our brains would not be so big if i if i didn't if i didn't have my tobacco cigarettes and if i didn't have my my coca-cola coca-cola was what gave us the evolutionary advantage we need drink coke everybody no no like, it's our ability know. to like uh Eat, uh, eat cooked meat, right? I don't it's think like it was cooked meat. I think it was cooked food in general. I don't believe. I believe the the first like like cooked food breaks down, uh, like specifically shoots and um and wheats, which are normally they're very high in cellulose, which um our bodies can't digest because we're not ruminants. Like ruminants, like cows and 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 whatever llamas and stuff like that, they can eat grass and stuff because they chew it so much and they digest it multiple times and so they can break down the cellulose for us we had to figure out cooking cooking breaks down cellulose so that we can digest it into di dietary fibers which are very valuable for us it's not i don't think i'm, I'm quite sure now i might be mis i might be misremembering some bit of my anthropology uh learning but i'm quite sure that it was the it was cooking things in general not cooking meat that did that and anyway we don't need it um, anymore so who cares yeah, I'm that's pretty, neither here nor read some stuff about like when we started eating meat and the increasing brain capacity or whatever because meat has like den uh, denser calories and much more protein sure, but we can easily we, right now it is literally safer and easier for us to to produce uh like uh non-meat solutions for those nutrient for those nutrients like we can like it's it's actually like meat is actually killing our planet like it really really is okay. like that and oil that's one thing that kind of like fucks with me because like i've considered going vegan before and apart from the fact that I just get depressed when I don't fucking eat meat, um, I can't find, like, most, uh, I can't find vegan food that, like, tastes any fucking good to me, that, that is, like, filling enough for me well, to eat. Like, I mean, apart from, like, there's... I have to eat mashed potato or something for every meal to get enough calories. And that's just... um, One thing I will recommend, if you want something that's super tasty and super filling, uh, a personal recommendation, you can actually look up Taco Bell's uh, spicy potatoes. 
um, are absolutely fucking delicious. They are um, they are inc they are quite nutritious because they're potatoes, um, and they substitute for meat very well. As in, it's pretty hard to like like they give you a texture and everything because they're like the, the way that you do them. There's one. I mean, I could do a whole thing if like if you wanted to talk personally about what I've done to reduce meat consumption, etc. That I'd be totally down for that. In fact, I my advocacy my, like I actually. If I ever become like a billionaire, one of the things I'm going to do that I've talked about on this stream in arguments with fucking obnoxious moralistic vegans who I really disagree with, um, like that's why uh, I felt like you were coming off as at the start well, of the stream. Well, it's <laughs> funny. It's just like just like the obnoxious moralistic vegans, the obnoxious moralistic carnists never listen to the actual argument. Um, okay, Spoiler. Jojo Killer, I'm 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 I. Somebody mute Jojo Killer for ten minutes. I'm gonna lose my mind if Jojo Killer adds me one more time. I swear to fucking God. <laughs> Somebody mute now. Ten minutes. Jesus, so there we go. Thank yeah. you, Gayfish. Um, I'm sure I'm sure I'll get an email about that one. Probably. <laughs> okay. So what I was saying is that like my my advocacy. Um, with regard to veganism is that there should be here's my here I'll, I'll give you my pitch I tell this all the time I take every opportunity I can because I think it's valuable but what I want to do is uh, is and, and this could be done right now by the way there are billionaire vegans and millionaire vegans who could right now solve this problem here's what you do you hire a team of, of researchers and you have them go around and do a road trip around the united states surveying as many people as possible and finding out what meals everybody what meat meals everybody eats most commonly the most common dishes in america that are uh, uh that are like ha that eat a lot of meat because a lot of poor people eat meat in america at least and um that there's a number of reasons for that uh, subsidies. Yeah, there's a number of, of subsidies. There's a number of things like that. But um, let's uh, let, we'll put that aside. So you find out what this is. You find out what it is for each of the regions, and then you take that research and you say, okay, here's the here's the most popular meat meals that are eaten in America. How do we make a as close as possible vegan or vegetarian equivalent of this? And and do so and it almost assuredly would be cheaper because vegetables are by and large they are indeed cheaper they are more nutritious pound for pound there might be some challenges but i think a team of of, of motivated uh of motivated and well-paid uh food scientists could probably easily find out a way to make this possible you like, figure out these... nutritious pound for pound sorry you just like said yes that they and are. I was like well, hang on uh, a second. by and large there are some exceptions this is not the case um like for example there are certain uh iron and and b12 i think um yeah. is uh is is like a little bit rarer but there are there are supplements that you there are supplements that you can add for that that are extremely cheap and extremely easy there are some vegetables that contain that that you can use beans for example have a lot of iron uh and certain there are a couple of vegetables that have b12 but that's neither here nor there um mm -hmm. the the fact of the matter is you make a cookbook with with the vegan and vegetarian almost identical versions that easily teaches people how to source and cook these meals then you take that and you with your funding that you have from whoever the billionaire is who's backing you 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 take that that cookbook and you give it away for free everywhere you advertise it on youtube videos you go you stand out you have your your people go and you stand out in front of um of uh of of uh grocery stores and you give out this thing and you just go hey listen um meat is is super super unhealthy we we know that a lot of people like meat and love it but here's a cookbook that will teach you how to make all of your favorite dishes the most popular dishes in america with vegetables and you'll save yourself money doing it take the cookbook and you get as many people to adopt that as possible how could you make like barbecue or beef brisket or fried chicken that's oh, you'd like be amazed did you know that fried chicken can be made with a thing called seitan which if now seitan is a little bit hard to master anything like fucking chicken oh it absolutely does when you do it correctly it is it is almost indistinguishable from chicken and yes it is easy to mess up it takes some mastery to get but that's true for anything it's just hard it's just hard to teach it that's the problem the biggest the biggest thing that's blocking veganism in most places is that people don't know they don't know and they don't have the energy or time because of capitalism to actually make adjustments to their diet even though they would probably be happier if americans didn't eat as much meat they would probably be they would probably be significantly significantly um 
happier. Specifically, red meat. Red meat is like really fucking bad for your heart. Really bad for your heart. Really bad for your brain. And really bad for your cardiovascular system in general. And like, yet we consume an incredible amount of it. We, we consume more than basically any other country. So the only problem with your proposition, right, uh -huh. is you're assuming that you're assuming that billionaires would put their time and money towards actually useful fucking things. Well, I think there are other solutions, but like I think that you could do this on a uh, a sufficiently democratic level. Um, but the 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 short the short pitch, the like elevator pitch is yes, uh, fucking Gwyneth Paltrow or one of these other stupid virtue signaling fake fucking asshole vegans should put their money up and do exactly what I tell them to do because I have a better idea than they do. They're shitty. Party interested in fumigating her fucking vagina or whatever the fuck yeah, it is yeah but that's because they're now. stupid they're stupid and they're consumers and they don't actually know what they're doing this is why I know you're, vegans. Touching on. you're touching on you're touching on the fact that like the, so the major fucking problem that i see with like the factory farming industry and why it's so hard to reform to anything resembling uh some kind of humane process right uh is capitalism Right? Yes. Is the is the of course is just to do purely for profit. If we could yeah. if we could get rid of that that profit motive, we could actually move towards like trying to farm animals in a more ethical way. Oh and well, I honestly I... are you ready for my hottest take like... yet? Are you ready for my hottest yeah. vegan take yet? Here mm -hmm. we go. Prepare, chat. If we don't solve if we don't solve the meat industry, we will not defeat capitalism. I unironically believe that defeating capitalism will require us to defeat the meat industry because. Right hmm. now, the meat industry is the meat industry in coordination with like uh, overseas shipping. Uh, these powerful. two are that is it is very powerful. But I have the, I believe that I could make the case for it with 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 the evidence with all the evidence that I have. The the uh, animal agriculture does so much damage to the environment. We will not have time to end capitalism if we do not end factory farming. Um, and I genuinely believe that. So I think that it is, if you are, if you are an anti-capitalist, you should take vegan issues seriously because our planet won't exist for us to beat capitalism if we don't take veganism seriously. Hmm. I've been yep. wondering about how much I care about anti-capitalism recently. Like, as an immediate problem, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to like, deal with something that's so fucking far in the future when... We're not even doing, and this is one of the things that really fucking pisses me off, is there's a whole bunch of people who will sit on these fucking platforms and talk about capitalism bad, capitalism bad, etc. And we'll never talk about the things that we can do right now immediately uh, in terms of organizing to create, uh, to, to improve people's material conditions, like fucking right now. There's an absolute... Oh, that's mostly uh, what I talk about. ...pragmatic so. leftists here on this platform. I, I mean, I I'm about I the most pra I'm about the most fucking pragmatic leftist that you can that you can imagine on this platform. I mean, I don't know. There's probably other ones who are better. I don't know. Like probably Bo the Fifth Column's a little better than I am because Bo, Bo the Fifth Column like teaches people survival skills. But like, I don't know. Yeah, I try to focus on what people can do in their daily lives. And and but I'm not even like I don't know. Like I'm a political edutainer. My my goal and my vision for my channel is more or less to be like to just every single day. Uh, make people smile for a couple hours so they keep going and also uh, and also teach them something cool that can make their life better and hopefully help certain political goals. So I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I do think there's a problem with that. A lot of people like to like get all high minded and talk about I mean, this is the pathology of the of the communist, right, is like seeing capitalism as as an ultimate evil that's basically like an abstract presence that needs to be destroyed and struck and down and exercised from the world but that's not really how it works we're in we're ingrained into mm. these systems we have to change them with our actions yeah i mean i i completely agree i don't think that any of the problems that we talk about like um when we're talking about like you know the quasi-fascistic ideal citizen right the straight mm. cis hat white fucking uh, able-bodied neurotypical person right that everybody is measured against and if you deviate from that then you're f i don't think we can get rid of that without getting rid of capitalism i think capitalism creates that hierarchy of uh because it because it's based is predicated upon the idea of meritocracy and the idea of meritocracy is predicated upon the idea that some people are superior to other people right and there's no denying like mark like mark said right about the people who work the fields and who work the mountains or whatever right people have different skills and abilities that's why i said from each according to their ability to each according to their need people are yeah, different. i say it the other way around um, but yeah Sure. Call yeah. me, a, but, call me a, an anti-worker, but 
that's all right. Um, Mark said a lot of shit that was dumb, but that makes that makes sense. Like, um, and and um, fuck, what was I saying? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and cap and and the way capitalism says that like people people just inherently have more fucking merit, right? Some people deserve to be treated better than others and and it's so so capitalism eliminates the to each according to his need right and assumes that people who I mean... have greater ability are just better so i don't think we can ever eliminate everything without eliminating capitalism but i think that that's that's like a lot of people say that and then they're just like well you know so why focus on on these tiny little things and it's like well you know there are people there are people living in food poverty in your fucking neighborhood dude <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, but I mean, I, I've, just... I've talked, I talked about that yesterday in my, in my whole vegan roasting section. This is the, this today is the flip side of yesterday, uh, where nobody, all the, yesterday, all the obnoxious vegans didn't listen to what I was saying about how vegans preaching, uh, uh and calling people the R slur because, uh, they think that because they said that vegans are a little bit stuck up, um, is not Ouch. effective. Um, yeah, that actually Shitting happened. That's yeah, shitting on an unrelated, uh, marginalized group uh, to get your fucking point across. Yeah, we don't. No. I, I think we all know who did that, right? I mean, we know. Listen, I, I've I have no a idea, very well known honestly. vegan in this space, but. Um, <laughs> I don't know a lot of vegans. It's vegan gains. No, vegan it's, uh, gains. it was Ask Yourself. It was Ask Yourself and uh, Avi Bitterman, um, who uh, are very, very into the vegan. Well, they they don't like uh, they had some pretty bad arguments and I roasted the shit out of them. And then today I decided that to show in an act of good a meaningless act of good faith um, that I would critique I would critique a equally stupid take from another big content creator, which is uh, Shoe on Head, who made a, a very very stupid naturalistic fallacy argument for uh, why why bestiality is worse than meat meat consumption. Um, I don't know. Once she said children weren't safe around drag queens, I stopped paying attention. Yeah, I have a lot but of like, critiques for Shoe on Head. Uh, I, w I look forward to someday talking to Shoe on Head, but I highly doubt it. I highly doubt that a debate will ever happen. But if we ever have a talk, it would be very interesting. Anyway, so you were so so. Are we in agreement now? Do you think there can be some some way to ethically farm uh, farm meat? I don't think that there is any um, pra practical. I don't think that there's any practical way to ethically farm meat right now. I do think that we could, if we support, if we like, uh, if we refocus our efforts, not on perpetuating factory farming or even subsistent hunting, but instead like lean whole hog into into uh, technologies that allow us to like create meat lattices like in labs, which is something by the way I know somebody who does this work who's like actively yeah. a vegan who is actively involved in that. That's awesome, and we should be able I to do that. I would have great meat instead. Like if it was if it was as uh, if it was the same price and it tasted the same, I would. Yeah, do I it. mean it will. It is. It will be genetically identical, but it will be incapable of suffering because it will not be plugged into any nervous system. That'd be amazing, and we could probably do it very cheaply. Um, so far, but, we can't do it because it well, just comes out all fucking mushy because no that's not true the, that's not true stuff. we have um we have lab meat we have lab meat in america that's indistinguishable it's just very expensive right now um, Amer um in america we have like really good we have a lot of meat substitutes we even have um there's these things called uh, there's a thing called beyond meat and impossible burgers that are damn near in yeah. indistinguishable like um i would say that the I'm impossible sure. burger is a little bit too nutty it's a little too hazelnutty but other than that texture wise it's identical to ground beef um but anyway that's again neither here nor there um i do i don't think that there's any practical way that we can reach like ethical animal farming and harvesting for meat um yet i think that what we could do though is we could probably if we just acknowledge that and we bite the bullet and acknowledge that wow this is a really horrible practice that we should get rid of as soon as possible because it's also killing us really quickly mm -hmm. um then we could we could refocus our energy and resources into uh like producing lab-grown luxury meat that would probably meet all of meet all of the needs of, of humanity's meat consumption as like a as like a nice luxury at like a, a fraction of the cost and a fraction of the damage to the environment but right now uh the a animal agriculture is part and parcel with capitalism and uh i don't i, I and we're like they're basically uh, the animal agriculture industry is sitting on the button on the acceleration button towards e e ecological collapse. And I think that like, I unironically, like one of the areas where I'm most, um, 
I would say that I'm like most open to revolutionary solutions is with regard to animal issues, because I think it's so bad. It's so out of control. It's so evil. And it's so damaging to our environments that like there's almost no other option except for radical, radical challenging of, of animal agriculture. Yeah, I think yep. I think I would agree that we're probably not going to be able to get to ethical farming uh, before we get to being able to just produce meat in the lab. So the ethical farming will be completely fucking unnecessary anyway. Yeah, that's why um, I think that we should just bite that bullet, you know? Yeah, no, I think I'd agree with you on that. I think deer calls are probably still cool. Um, I mean, they're going to the happen. I mean, deer, deer, deer calls have to happen because we fucked that up. But like, again, we should recognize that we should recognize that and learn from that. Um, also, like we have another problem. This is like this is sort of um, this is uh, this is sort of um, a another. I love deer. What? I love deer. They're beautiful. I, I love deer. I, I love deer. Uh, I love. Sorry, I, no, love I love deer a lot. I, just hate I really I love deer. Hate like as in, I, I used I to love... I used to love I used to have a deer that I would talk to every single morning. Literally, I would wake up in the morning, I would go out for a, a, a fucking weed to, to smoke some weed, and there would be a every single morning in our yard. Yeah, go out for a weed. <laughs> I would go out for a weed smoke and uh there would be a there would be a there was this beautiful, beautiful buck that um that would sit outside, right outside of our porch, and it would just sit there and it would just chew on grass and look at us. And we would talk to it. I would be like, hey, buddy, how you doing? He would let us walk right up to him. It was unbelievable. Oh, Lexi. Oh, my God. Oh, no, I forgot. I forgot to add that. Hold on. I'll, I I forgot. I got to add that. You know what? I'm going to do it right now. Hold on. I'll even reload. <laughs> I'll do it right now. I, I've been distracted so much. I've, my brain has been, like, fried this week. Um, but, at the same, but at the same time, like, I love deer. But there's also just something really fucking cool about uh about hunting deer as well so sure, really but, uh, I mean, like but we have video I games wish I had, that, right? like, come on i wish i had a good word for it it's, video games aren't the same and, i mean they could be no, though i mean and, we're and, getting closer and closer and, right sure but knowing that something has given its life for your meal and like obviously we all kind Wait of a instinctively minute. That when we when we eat a fucking when we eat a burger or whatever right but it's different when you've like killed it yourself you know you just feel a greater connection to the to the whatever there's i mean not, but isn't that kind of like wait you know? oh, this is just a, a question like to prod your mind uh like but like doesn't that kind of clash with your idea that we take it as like an axiomatic truth um that like we we don't do things for the purpose of like the suffering like aren't you saying that like the act of killing You're it yourself it's not for the purpose of the suffering it's not because you like um you like killing or hurting an animal um it's uh it's part of like just a deeper connection to the natural world and all that sort of shit like when you eat a fucking burger at home okay you've you've you, something has died so that you can eat that burger right um right. but you have no fucking like you don't most people don't even think about that right Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, if you've actually been actively engaged in the process of the of the killing, of the fucking, uh, you know, getting rid of all the organs, skinning, fucking draining, blah, 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 hanging yeah. meat, you know, it's, sure. The, the, sure. yeah, there's something a lot more rewarding about that. And it makes you, it makes you appreciate it more, right? You get more, whatever it is you get out of eating your, uh, eating I mean, your venison it... burger, you get more of that. Yeah. I don't know. I think they might be different things. Like, I think that you're you're talking about a different type of like it doesn't. I don't think it literally makes it taste better. I think there's a separate. You're 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 touching on a separate uh, emotion. At least, at least when I think of it, like I think of that as like a separate emotion. Like like the, the satisfaction of whatever action you completed of like the completed hunt or whatever. I guess um, if we want to get all bloodborne in here, um, like I I would say that that is probably uh uh you know a bit like that's a separate emotion that can enhance the other one but is not necessarily intrinsic to the to the meal eating i do think that's an I important think, distinction to make when i was like when i was like trapping um uh, mostly rabbits uh to yeah. be fair because like I, I didn't have a gun when i was like homeless at 16 but when i was trapping rabbits 
there was there was some there was a weird sense of accomplishment there that had something to do with like um independence from like literally anybody else right well, sure but like, but i mean surely you acknowledge no that that's like a separate like a, a separate thing than um like that's a separate a separate emotion necess like that's a separate emotion than uh than like the act of eating it like you're you're taking pride in an accomplishment or what you see as an accomplishment as you know like an independence from other people as opposed to like it's not yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a separate the, emotion the meal is, right the meal is like the for result. example you like take... what if uh, let me give you a let me give you a, a a hypothetical that i think you might be able to understand so what if um there was a potential future in which we have a basically the hollow deck from star trek okay and this the hollow deck it spawns you in in a virtually a in almost indistinguishable forest and you hunt down a virtual deer you do all the actions necessary etc and then at the very end w when you walk out of your hollow deck um it, yeah, yeah, it plops a meat yeah it plops a, a lab grown meat um you know a lab grown meat right into your hands or onto your plate or whatever don't you think that that would probably that would realistically probably recreate the exact same emotion right um, no, I don't think so. Why? So I mean, well, one, I mean, you would know it's like a simulation. Um, well, I mean, you, but I mean, two, the, it wouldn't necessarily. It would be a contest between you and a machine. Um, three, like the machine is manufactured. It's not you doing something independently. Somebody else has set up a game for you to win, and you get a reward, right? Like, there's there's uh, a whole I mean, bunch of different. That in there that would change the experience i think mm. i'm not saying that it couldn't be rewarding i'm sure it could be but i i don't think it would be rewarding in the same kind of way interesting yeah so uh it, that sounds to me like there is some essentialist nature like you're basically giving an essential quality to actually going into quote unquote real nature which i would i would say in my opinion um is 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 probably a, a matter of artifice because like for all well, you know nature I, i'm what i'm saying is sort of like independent from like human society and so on right like so many other but people it's not do though shit. It, but right now but that's once again that's artifice like the, the the idea that nature is somehow separate from humanity is is art is an artificial it, it, that is an artificial sensation that is produced by you walking into the woods like that isn't these areas are like the earth is more or less uh c completely impacted at every area by humans like when you even when you go into the furthest jungle like you are breathing air that contains uh human uh you know human pollution like so the idea like yeah. it's a matter of mind like you're, you're talking about a a, a a psychological um okay. for sure right? I'm or spiritual perhaps but, yeah it might even be spiritual okay it's interesting that I, is interesting i, I do I, I really wish I could. I really wish I could put it into better words. Honestly, um, mm. I don't think I can uh, communicate it to somebody who hasn't who hasn't experienced it. Oh, I've mean, I've gone but hunting and fishing extensively. I just I just don't value. I mean, I loved fishing when I was younger, but I was disturbed by the suffering of the fish, even um, sure, even, as, yeah. even when I was younger, I, I was, and of the, even of the worm that you have to impale onto your onto a spear in order to onto a like barbed spike in order to lure the fish. Um, but like the problem is that like, I, I just don't value, I don't think that it is correct or accurate or, or anything to value m the pleasure I gain from fishing over the um, like over the, the, the coercive so and painful. Feel, fish can definitely feel pain, right? Well, of course but they like, can. I mean, obviously, they're the fish have li very, very limited memory. But like, I, I do, I don't think. I think we should approach it very carefully, right? Because many people would have include would have simply concluded, oh, well, an octopus, fucking stupid, just smush it. Like, I mean, and they do, they do, right? So I think we should be careful, and we should try and uh, we should err on the side of not causing mass suffering, um, you know, if we can. That's that's what I'm saying is that we should wait. We should actually. Um, 
instead of spending so much time gaining enjoyment from harming creatures that we don't actually know their level of sentience based on the assumption that they're not sentient in any way shape or form or they're not capable of remembering trauma or anything like that like instead of doing that we should probably say hold on first why don't we find out if they're actually capable like i'm relatively comfortable saying yes we can eat bugs um and whatnot because uh as far as everything that i can tell there's no we have not even the close what's that <laughs> the leftists they want us all to eat bugs oh no i don't i i want you to eat vegetables I want you to eat vegetables. I want people to eat fucking vegetables. I want people to be, I want me to eat more vegetables. I want, that's what I want. I don't care about the bugs. I'm just saying like, if we have to, like we already eat wet bugs, like we already eat like lobsters and shit. And like those things are basically, I mean, as like lobsters have a, a, a nerve cluster. They don't even have a proper brain. It's like this tiny little, uh, mm. it's like a tiny, it's like a tiny cluster of nerves that doesn't even take, it doesn't even have memories. They don't even have the capability of storing memories. So, I mean, it is possible that, like, there are forms of intellect. What's that? Oh, that, that's what, that's the thing. Like, some of these animals, like, I'm not even convinced that they, like, actually feel the pain, right? I like, mean, yeah, I mean. Obviously, there's a reflex, but, like, how much of that reflex actually reaches any kind of central processor, right, that can trans, uh, that can, like, uh, that can understand that, that is aware of what's happening. Right. Yeah. Well, being reflex. Yeah, I'm open to the idea that there are types of intelligence that we don't understand. So, for example, like I think that it is possible that like, um, while like while we're kind of like oh bees, like they're just kind of like like mindless machines that a accomplish a, a a purpose, like an organic machine. I think it's possible that wait a minute, what if they have like a distributed intelligence? And there is some evidence that that's the case. That there there are forms of intelligence that we don't understand yet. Um, and you know, uh, I think that we should uh take that seriously. Is is what I'm saying. And but but regardless, even if we don't want to go into the super esoteric like big brain, uh, are there forms of intelligence that we don't understand? Um, oh well, guess what. Uh, wait a second. Hold on. Neandroid, real quick question. When you say this is such a cringe argument, who are you referring to? Yeah, I don't know who's really arguing here. Yeah. I mean, okay, because I, I, I was just about ready to pull, pull a trigger and blast somebody out of chat because I'm very annoyed. <laughs> um, because I, I feel like I feel like right now we are at the best. We are at like the best. Um, we are at like the best point in this conversation that we've been at where both of us are making relatively meaningful and impactful and and good arguments i feel like at the beginning it was completely stupid but that's your fault um and i will hold by that <laughs> I, didn't know. Um, I thought you you even admitted it it's the carnist in chat so i no, was, I was calling you a carnist in chat and the other people who made stupid arguments like yours like you're fronting mega hard and like and like doing this I, like oh yeah i don't give a right. shit about animals look at how edgy i am i'm gonna bite a steak <laughs> yum 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 like come on steak is tasty but yeah sure <laughs> um but so, yeah i had a really good point to make and then we just went off again but, uh, i was gonna say something about like uh like basically I think that we should take it very seriously, and the current status quo is so far out of the the realm of ethical correctness that I don't think mm -hmm. that there is any. Uh, I, I have not. I am unconvinced that there is a a a, a salient or rational position in the favor of of meat eating as it currently stands, like in the favor of 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 animal products as it currently stands. I just don't think. That is what I yeah. Here's what I think. I think mm -hmm. the entire moral argument has like little to no utility uh, in 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 achieving your goal of getting people to eat less meat. Um, mm -hmm. I think it will work on a few people, but the people that it works on will already come to that ethical conclusion anyway. They will have some kind of affinity for animals. They'll care about animals, and they'll they'll walk themselves down the path to vegetarianism or veganism. Right. Um, um, maybe. I think better arguments that are more likely to convince more people are what you hinted on earlier, which is mm -hmm. the environmental argument. I think the environmental oh, yeah. argument is probably one of the strongest arguments for um, for for veganism or vegetarianism or whatever. Well, the, the good that... news is, is that I I also don't uh, generally lean on or utilize the moral argument, but I do think it's valuable to consider. I think it's important to talk about. I don't think that passing moral judgment, in fact, that's literally what I did. I've done like three segments over the last couple months about vegans who just like, who who subscribe to this, uh, this 
idea of like consumeristic morality where basically um where basically uh what they do is is they they make this argument they, they approach everybody as like oh nice murder burger like that type of thing which i think is very stupid and also ineffective um and also doesn't actually make a good argument because it makes the argument that the core the core moral problem is not the mass suffering but rather that you bought a thing that i don't care like we buy things that are disgustingly unethical all the time um i do think there's some arguments to be made that like animal products are are very are so unethical they're so bad that we should give them um extra extra um you know some, like a little nestle, bit of extra... join the nestle boycott nestle boycott yeah fuck nestle nestle fucked up my home state like unironically like nestle actually fucked up my home state i hate nestle um, I would, uh, listen, there's a lot of things that I would condone. Uh, no, wait, uh, sorry. Uh, and Nestle is bad. Okay. Nestle bad. Um, they're Nestle really bad. Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, um, Nestle other... is super bad. Nestle especially. Yeah. I, I, I stopped. I, I, I genuinely don't eat Nestle products now. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I, I think, go ahead. Sorry. You can't... Oh yeah, there's there's the whole like no ethical consumption under capitalism, blah blah blah, right? Um, and and that you you can't avoid, you have, you have to buy shit to like live and to li have a decent quality of life as well, right? But yeah. I think that we, I think there is, I think it's, I think it's important for each person to individually go like try and work out what is most important to them and which mm -hmm. companies are, um, are. Uh, causing causing the kind of harms that those individual people care about the most right and yeah. for me nestle especially with their sort of like attempts to like privatize water in various countries and and all here sorts in the u.s of really they've succeeded yeah. in a lot of places here uh, in the u.s yeah yeah and yeah. and using lots of like ridiculous amounts of slave labor um yeah so, um i mean i, mean, I will say that like they, they get a few cents in a house or whatever but like quite often they're not even allowed to leave the fucking plantations so right yeah. like <laughs> i mean i i agree i just think again like the the thing that i again my position is that uh, i am i think that we should use whatever effective ta whatever effective rhetorical tactics we can to end the disgustingly immoral practice of of mass animal agriculture um and 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 we should uh, and i think sometimes an ethical argument can be very meaningful to people um i, I think don't know most people though is most people are like most people are like well there's no ethical consumption under capitalism all of these fucking things are bad and I, I can only cut out so many things from my life before it starts affecting me unduly well yes uh, and i know more about boycotting nestle than i do about not eating meat well that's not fine and that's perfectly fine. i mean that's why i argue though i, I... I don't say that people like I I don't advocate for people to just like snap and become a vegan. Like I say that you should do your best to reduce, but don't put undue burden on yourself over over any consumer de decision. Like I don't I don't even I don't even care if people like boycott shit like um like Chick-fil-A. What I want them to know, however, is I want them to know what causes those things so that they can they can see a systemic uh, so they can see the system that it's plugged into. I don't really believe that, like, there is any real path to, like, um, consuming our way out of the meat industry or consuming our way out of capitalism. I don't think that if everybody started, like, if a bunch of people started buying the right vegan products or whatever, I don't think that would solve most of our problems. However, I do think that there are systemic solutions that could, like, I mean, I gave you my one earlier, which is a very proactive solution. Um, and I could talk about some more, uh, I guess I could say extreme solutions that I think are probably morally justified. Um, like, I mean, uh like i i oh, never endorse I... street here what's that are we going down the eco terrorist street here uh no not eco terrorist I, I no in fact i don't really i think that's very very ineffective however um there has been some groups uh recently um american uh american slaughterhouses were hacked by a um by a a, ra a radical ecologist hacker group and it destroyed it actually completely like basically ransomware and locked down all of their software and it shut down meat plants all over america so we're having like a local meat price hike and um i i think that like while i don't endorse any sort of activity like that i do think that there is some um there is some argument to be made that that is a a fair response to the the ecological destruction that is being currently meted out by meat companies um so, that, so that's yeah. where we get into like really spooky potential tos territory there 
<laughs> I no, can't. not really. I mean, I, I don't think. Wait, I mean, is it is it TOS? Is it TOS to say that like I I don't think it like I don't think it was like like is it TOS to say or is it like even is it even ethically bad to say that like I don't care when like AT and T gets one of their servers taken down because of an angry hacker? Like I don't care. Like fuck them. AT and T <laughs> fucks the lives over many of many people. Like I don't think that's bad. I don't think that's. Yeah, I don't think no, that's TOS. Not, uh, yeah, no, but I, I, I explicitly oppose groups like um, I explicitly, uh, uh, you know, oppose groups that use like, like the, the, the like, like uh, what's the fucking group? There's like a, there's like a this group that's like a Liberation Front or something, Earth Liberation or something. They, they like target uh like random research labs and they've like used uh like anti anti-personnel weaponry like i think that's horrible um so yeah that's not yeah, the type of stuff i'm talking about but i think that like i what's them, that like oh there's some really fucked up shit going on in south america with them literally like abducting um businessmen and like yeah it's really fucked i don't i don't support that sort of thing i don't and i also don't think it's particularly effective however um i think that um i think that uh like in the same way that i would support a strike of meat workers like a like a mass strike of meat workers like i would like not only i would full-throatedly support that i could also support I, I would also support a digital digital strike of 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 their it staff like refusing to fix a problem you know that's that's jamming up their factories i have no problem mm -hmm. with that sort of thing in the same way say so it's it's labor friendly i just i do believe in pe in generally peaceful methods um and sometimes i think that uh that when a when a corporation or a company is so unbelievably unethical um, and is able to avoid all repercussion for their actions, even going so far as to like literally poisoning entire um, entire uh, communities of our country, I think it's fair to say that like if if that I don't give a shit if like some hacker group fucks it up. I mean, I don't advocate for anything like that, but I, I don't give a shit. So yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad we've I'm glad we've sat down and come to like a more reasonable fucking conversation. I think that's I nice. think what you mean to say there, Vivian, is I'm glad that you've calmed down, walked back your position, and come to a much more reasonable position throughout this conversation. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but but yes, other than that, it was I just nice. Want you to okay, I've had I I've had a lot of people slinging shit at me. Saying I that I just uh, saying that I'm just coming in here to start shit because I don't like Vosh, and I want to be super super fucking clear with you. Okay. I know you don't like Vosh. It's okay. I don't want you to think this. All right. Okay. I don't want you to think that I'm one of those people who's like guilt by association, fuck you kind of people. Okay. I know you're not. I like. You. I always I always say that I like you, whenever you're. And you also say you hate me. Uh, I've, I think once or twice I've said I really don't like debating you. Um, I remember hey, the first good. debate. Yeah, I was alright, right? You like, were so I, annoying in that debate, and you also continually- I have not shit on you about that debate since it, but I you did, you did. Remember. Yeah, I, I know, it's remember okay. What was it about? All uh, I remember I don't remember. I came away from that debate feeling like utter shit, okay? Well, I mean, wasn't I didn't, but... Event. I, I I mean I um, was a little frustrated, but but I was mostly you know I was just I was there for the spice, but I I I think that this was a more productive of our discussions. And Viv, you know I get along. You know I like you. I like you as well. There is no uh there is no. But you, you fucking came in hot. Let's just fucking be real. All right. Listen, I know we all do it sometimes. I, spicy as fuck. In hot in spicy okay, as fuck. Okay. Yeah yeah. All right. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Listen. Maybe I misread the situation. Okay, mm -hmm. it wasn't meant to. Be. It wasn't we meant looked to up play. the logs on stream. You don't got to do it. You could just say, "All right, we're good." All right. No, I'm. Oh no, I'm fine. Saying, I'm just saying. Like, I, 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 I was only trying to meet your energy. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to upset you or make okay. you feel like shit or hurt sure. you in any way. All right. All right. Well, I know you can't like... hurt me anyway. I'm real strong. <laughs> sure. Wait, All right. what debate did we have two years ago? Oh, no. No, don't pick another uh, fight. Come on, you gotta go get your rest. Come on, don't do another one. Like, whatever. Like, There's no I, beef? I, True, I, VM Draco, no beef! <laughs> I don't care about two-year-old two fucking debates with Lexi. Like, I, I really don't. Like, if she never wants to talk to me again, it's fine. If she wants to, like, be, be, no. uh, be okay with me, that's also fine. I don't give a chance. It's all good. Yeah, Doe do goes by Doe now. I so, talked yeah. about her in fucking forever. All righty. Well, Viv, uh, thanks for coming on. I'm glad we were able to uh, sort this out, and we'll talk soon, okay? 
All right. Peace. All right. Bye. Bye. Well, that was interesting. That was interesting. That went better than I thought it was going to, to be fair. I mean, I was very happy. Uh, listen, I, I stand by... I stand by my call out, okay? I do. I do. I stand by my call out uh, of the initial rhetoric, but but we sort